What's going on guys, welcome to another Doctor Who Classic Review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the first Doctor William Hartnell story, The Aztecs. This is another story from Series 1, the first ever series of Doctor Who. It's actually only the fourth story from the series I've watched so far. So um, yeah, I was really interested to see this one. I'd heard quite a lot of people say this is a pretty good story. Um, it's a pure historical, the second pure historical, but the first available on DVD because Marco Polo is the only story actually from season one that you can't get on DVD. Um, a couple of others like the Rain and Terror and stuff have animation in there. Most of season one though is complete though, which is pretty cool. But um, yeah, the Aztecs is the earliest pure historical on DVD. Um, it's actually only the second pure historical I've seen in all of Classic Who. I've seen this and the Romans. So um, I was really interested to see what I thought of this because I did quite enjoy the Romans. It's, I think at the moment, my second favorite first Doctor story. But anyway, this is The Aztecs by John Lucarotti. The TARDIS materializes in Mexico in the 15th century, where the Doctor and his companions soon discover that it is a bloodthirsty and dangerous place. With Barbara mistaken for a reincarnation of an Aztec high priest called Yatexa, she thinks that she can put an end to the barbaric humanity sacrifices once and for all. But can she rewrite history without disastrous consequences? So I think it's a pretty interesting thing. We've got basically a thing here where almost instantly um, Barbara gets mistaken for this um, high priest of, um, of the Aztecs, um, Yatexa. Um, and she, you know, the Aztecs, they have a thing where they kind of have a ritual where they uh, kill someone um, and to, to like, I don't know, for the gods or something and then it rains they believe that killing someone like changes the weather or some weird shit like that um but she doesn't really want this and because she's you know this high she's well playing this high priest basically pretending to be this high priest um she wants to stop this stuff she stops it all but then you know things kind of go wrong there because that's not how history is supposed to work but anyway let's get into this one starting off with the cast william arnold as the first doctor yeah, he's, he's pretty good in this one. Um, I don't think there's anything too monumental to say, but yeah, he is very good in this one. He has a few funny little moments, which is always nice to see. Um, a couple of uh, line stutters here and there. You get that a lot with, um, well, a lot with William Hartnell's era especially, but kind of the, the 60s especially in general. Um, you do get a few, because they didn't really have as much time to, um, to you know do their lines and stuff, and William Hartnell was not the best with his lines, so um, there are a couple of moments in there where he does forget lines, and he you know stutters a bit, but um, and it does take you out of it a little bit, but it's not too bad. And on the whole, I think William Hartnell he's he's a great actor, he's a great doctor, um, and he does a very good job. Carol Ann Ford as Susan Foreman. Um, I think she's all right in this one actually. Uh, this is probably my favorite appearance of Susan that I've seen so far. Um, bearing in mind, so far I've only seen her in not in, well, I, I've seen her in an unearthly child, the Daleks, the Ed Edge of Destruction. Um, the Dalek Invasion of Earth, and now this, uh, the Aztecs. And I think she's actually best here compared to what she is in a lot of those other stories. Um, I always have a thing with Susan where she's far too screamy. Luckily in this episode she doesn't really scream at all, and that's always good. On the other side though, she isn't a massive part of this story. This is a very, very, very Barbara-focused story, and Ian's in it quite a lot as well. I feel like Susan's a little bit shoved to the side in this story, and to be honest, to some extent, the Doctor is kind of shoved to the side a little bit too. It's really focusing on Barbara and Ian. Um, but yeah, Susan, she's alright, she, she just doesn't get a whole lot to do. Um, Jacqueline Hill as Barbara Wright, though, um, I, I really, really like her in this story. She basically takes centre stage in this one, uh, being more prominent than, than the Doctor, I would say. Um, and she does such a great job, I think. She, I mean, obviously she's a, I, is she a history teacher? I can't remember, she's a teacher, but I can't exactly remember what she teaches. I'm pretty sure one of them teaches history can't remember which one it is but she obviously knows a lot about the Aztecs and the way she talks and that she sounds like one of them and she just she works into it so well and her knowledge and stuff just helps her through this whole thing um, and I think yeah she, this is probably my favorite appearance of um of Barbara as well just because she gets so much to do and then we've got William Russell as Ian Chesterton I love Ian I really do I like him more and more every time I see him he's very good in this one um I wouldn't say this is his best performance, I mean, not necessarily not his best performance, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily his best kind of role in the story. He's fairly prominent in this one, once again, probably just as much as the first Doctor, um, but not quite as much as Barbara. Um, I think I prefer him a little bit more in the Romans, but and in maybe in a couple of other stories as well, but he is definitely very good here, there's no doubt about that. 
Alright, so the good and the bad, starting off with the good. Barbara being mistaken is a reincarnation of an Aztec high priest. I really think this is a cool thing to do. You know, I kind of already knew about this before um, watching this story. This is the first time I've seen the Aztecs. But I did have a bit of prior knowledge about what was going on. And obviously, you look at the, um, the DVD cover, I have the special edition, which is probably, hopefully, what you're seeing on the screen now as well. Um, and it shows her on the front with all this fancy jewellery and stuff on. So you kind of get straight away, and I mean, if you read the back of the DVD, which I don't tend to do before I watch the episodes, but um, if you do, then you'll know what's going on. And it happens within the first, like, five or so minutes. So, um, yeah, I just think it's really cool, her being mistaken as this high priest um, of the Aztecs. I think it's just an interesting thing. It gives her a lot more to do. I say this a lot. I like it very, very much when the companion get more to do when they're just sitting around and not doing a whole lot they become wooden plastic and just just kind of I don't know they just don't really do much they they just stand around um, I feel like that's kind of what Susan's like in this story she really doesn't do a whole lot um, but yeah I mean Barbara is so good in this one um, with what she gets given um, Ian defeating Ix Ixor what's his name Ix Ixter Ixter um, Ian defeating Ixter with his thumb I thought that was pretty cool. Don't quite know how he did it. Um, I mean, I'm guessing there's some kind of actual thing going on there, but he kind of just, I don't know, attacked him with his thumb and his hands and his fingers and kind of put him to sleep for a minute or so. Um, I thought that was a cool little scene. Don't really know how it works, but I, I liked it. Ian and Ixtar fighting. Um, yeah, they have their first fight after the thumb thing, because, you know, he Ixtar um, is like... I'm going to defeat him, you know, he may have defeated me this time, but I'm going to properly defeat him, I'm going to kill him this time. Um, and they have a fight, and it's a pretty good fight. Um, a lot of the fights in the classic series, especially in the 60s, aren't amazing. This one's not too bad, though. I, I thought it was a decently choreographed fight um, compared to some things that we'd seen. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I just, I thought it was pretty good. Um, what else we got? Uh, the Doctor accidentally getting engaged. I thought that was pretty funny. And... I thought it was funny because since then we've had it happen a few times. I mean, um, the one that I can remember specifically is, you know, the Tenth Doctor accidentally getting married to um, uh, Queen Victoria, was it, in the Day of the Doctor? Um, I, that was a really funny thing, and I just, I just like how it's, you know, this is, I imagine, the first time it happens <laughs> in this story, um, and I think, I think that's pretty cool. Kind of a bit random. His, you know, his. Um, Moments with that girl in the garden. I can't remember her name now. I, I'm looking at the list of people, but I, was it Kam Kameka? Kameka? Was it her? I don't know. Um, it was someone like that. Um, yeah, it was a bit random, but I guess it was there, and it was it was a pretty funny thing. So I like it because of that. And then finally, once again, Ian and X X Star's uh, final battle I thought was really good, very very well shot and um, choreographed and everything. Definitely the best of the fights of the like three or so fights we saw between them. Um, a little bit on the nose about how Ian um, basically just threw him off the top of the building. He did just kill him, which I don't know if that's really. I don't know. Maybe he kind of had no choice, but yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. So on to the bad. There isn't a whole lot to say to be honest. The only thing I've actually written down is that it does slow down a bit in the middle. This is from what I've heard and also now from quite a decent amount of experience seeing what I think maybe nine William Hartnell stories now. Um, it's something that I have noticed myself. Yeah, it does, episodes do seem to slow down. Like the first part seems pretty good. I think a lot of people call it the Hartnell, um, just the Hartnell problem or something like that. Episode one's pretty good. If it's like a four-parter, episode one's pretty good. Episodes two and three kind of slow down a bit. And then, at least from my experience, episode four does kind of bring it back around again and sums it up pretty well. Uh, yeah, I do find that that is the case with this story. It doesn't completely slow down to a halt in the middle, don't get me wrong. There is plenty going on and it's still relatively enjoyable. But I did feel like in parts two and three, um, it did slow down a bit. Um, you know, especially after we got introduced to everything so quickly. And things got wrapped up relatively quickly. Um... Yeah, and it also got wrapped up in a bit of a, I don't know, I mean, it got wrapped up okay, but they kind of just eventually managed to get through that door and basically just bug it off. Um, that was really it. So not the most satisfying ending, in my opinion, but um, I guess I don't really know how else you were going to do it, so I can't really fault it on that for too much. But yeah, the fact that it is a little bit slow in the middle does drag it down a little bit. Also, the fact that this story, although very interesting, the pure historicals, 
for me, for the two I've seen, this and the Romans, um, they work very well and they're exciting, but with having no alien threat or anything like that, I do prefer to, I do like to have an alien threat, um, and it just isn't really there in this one. I think the Romans, for me, worked a little bit better, um, but for this one, I don't know, it just doesn't quite have that feel to me, but um, yeah. So the Aztecs, did I enjoy it? Yeah, I did. I did enjoy this one. I definitely did. For a rating, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Um, I'm not 100% sure where it's going to rank yet. It's I've given it the same rating as I gave the Time Meddler. Um, I think that's the only other 8 out of 10 I've got for William Hartnell's era. That might not be the case, but I'm just thinking because Daleks was 8.5, the Romans was a 9. I think I might have given the rescue an 8, but it's sitting around about the Time Meddler. I think if I had to pick over the two, I'd probably just give it to the Time Meddler. Um, there's not a whole lot bad about this uh, story, but it just doesn't... It's another one of those stories that I find interesting, I do find quite enjoyable, but it slows down in the middle, and ultimately the plot isn't massively, extremely exciting um, to really boost it up anymore. So yeah, an 8 out of 10 is what I'm going to give the Aztecs. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe. Go in the description. Follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to do a lot more stuff on Twitter. Um, so please go and follow me. And I'll see you guys in the next video.